approval minutes of, from the last meeting. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Motion to second. All in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Okay. Uh, <clears throat> first thing on the agenda tonight is Smyrna Relford County Airport Authority. And I'm going to turn it over to Mayor Burgess to introduce and to uh, continue the discussion on the airport. Okay. You can see we've got a distinguished group of folks here with us tonight, but um, Mr. Mike Woods is the chairperson of the Smyrna Rutherford County Airport Authority, and Mr. John Black is the general manager. You, you guys come on up here because we're going to let you talk about this. Mm -hmm. But it's not enough cheer this pool. Well, you, got that, you got four, so depends on how many of them want to come up here. <laughs> then, then let, we won't Lisa up here. Yeah. Come on up here when we get to some, so she might as well come on up here now. <laughs> anyway, some of you might be like me. I know Ms. Cook and Mr. McAdoo and Mr. Parker probably know all about this, but I want y'all maybe just to define the, how this thing is structured here a little bit better. Actually, Rutherford County owns 60% and uh, Smyrna owns 40% of what's going on at Smyrna Airport Authority. Now, these guys have a board that's appointed by the commission and by Smyrna and by Laverne, and they do an excellent job managing that operation down there. And, and they just, I want y'all to sort of describe your operation and what you do. And um, they have put in place what I have told a few folks it's sort of the county's industrial park. They have created, and you can, they're gonna show you some things here, I believe, an opportunity for a continued invitation of other people to come and land their businesses there and, and what have you, and grow what's happening in our county. So all that being said is they have an opportunity uh, to receive a substantial amount of grant money from the uh, Whoever the FAA. Is, FAA. And, but it's not quite enough money to do this next project they want to do. So they're asking Rutherford County and Smyrna to loan them the additional money, our 60% and Smyrna's 40%, and uh, so that they can take the next step toward uh, having an opportunity to put something in place down there that will grow the economy and add jobs to our community. All right, that's about all I'm going to say there, but they're going to tell you what what they want to do and how they're going to do it. And Lisa and them have, uh, they've had, Mr. Black and them have prepared some pro forma information that shows how many dollars our part would be and how they pro propose to pay that back uh, if they borrow this money through the conduit of the county. So with that said, I'm going to stop there and let John, whoever wants to take over, Mike. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mayor Burgess and uh, uh, Chairman a Alan McAdoo. Appreciate y'all letting us come before this committee to share with you some of the things that we've got planned. I, I want to give you a little bit more background, that, uh, back up a little bit. Mayor Burgess did a good job of, of sharing that, but uh, uh, how Smyrna and Rutherford County came to owned the airport obviously it was an air force base and that was closed in 1970 the metropolitan national airport authority uh, received that property uh, at the airport property and operated it for some 20 years uh, we felt like it would be better managed locally and uh, so that effort was made by the county the city and the chamber to get that transferred to local control and uh, that was done in 1990, some 23 years ago. And uh, the governing body that was set up, as Mayor Burgess mentioned, was uh, one that uh, of an airport authority, which the structure of that uh, is a five-member board, uh, governing board, uh, two representatives from the appointed by the county, two appointed by uh, Smyrna, and one of that comes from the city of Laverne is recommended by the by the mayor of Laverne and is approved by the, both the county and the city of Smyrna. So that's how we have our board each year. A new uh, a board member or a board seat comes up. It's a rotating board. They could be 
reappointed or a new appointment made, but uh, every you serve on the board, or one would serve on the board for five years. So every year there's a board member that comes up. Uh, initially in 1990, uh, the airport board was, when it was created by the county and the city, we had no money, we had the asset. It was, the asset was probably, no telling what the airport, the book value of the airport's probably 40, 50 million dollars, just on the books. Uh, certainly you could not build that airport uh, for that kind of money, it would be a whole lot more than that. It contains about 1,700 acres, uh, a huge track of property. Uh, most of it is devoted to the runways and taxiways and hangar space. I was pleased to tell you that it's one of the few general aviation airports that is self-supporting, primarily self-supporting. Well, we, we worked very hard uh, to avoid coming to the county and coming to the city asking for any monies to, to operate the airport. We have just a little over a million dollar budget that we operate on right now. Uh, and that money comes uh, principally from uh, renting property, renting hangars, renting office space. And about the only way uh, we can grow our revenue to uh, help develop what properties we have is through uh, having more more buildings to rent and that's what brings us uh, to you tonight is we feel like there's an opportunity to uh, develop more property we have about 450 acres that does not have uh, utilities to it roads to it but uh, we feel like uh, a loan from the county and the city, uh, we can uh, obtain some grant money to help uh, develop about 40, 50 acres uh, of property that would be site ready for new industry to locate uh, in the county. Uh, we, as part of that, we would build a hangar and some office space that would generate revenue to help us repay uh, the loan from the county and the city. Uh, we've operated the airport very conservatively, uh, but we feel like now is the time to step out and uh, get some property ready. We feel like the economy is starting to turn and it's a good time uh, to build. Uh, we feel like the demand is there. What we have on the airport now uh, in terms of office space and hangar space is uh, completely <coughs> made, 100 percent. So uh, we've done our due diligence in looking at uh, respective businesses and feel like uh, there is some potential there to attract new jobs and to retain some existing uh, companies and allow them to expand. Uh, so we feel like it's a good time uh, to do that, we've borrowed some money from the county and from the city in the past. Uh, we have paid that back uh, on the schedule that we committed to pay back, so we've not been late. We've not asked uh, uh, for any extended time or anything. We've, we've met our obligation that we've had in the past. Uh, and like I said, the occupancy rate that we have in the uh, buildings and hangars and office space that we have there now has been 100% occupied for the last two years. Are you at liberty to, to say any companies that, that you may be in discussions with that may have the potential to come, or, or is it best not to say? Most of the time, and we work very closely with the Chamber and with the uh, economic develop, state economic development, most companies that are looking, they don't want their name right. divulged. But we we have had seen an uptick in, in people looking and companies looking the, the problem is, uh, when they look, they want to see where they're going. They want it. They want it site ready, and we don't. We really don't have any property that's site ready <coughs> right now. Uh, we just uh, was working with a company that would have been a big, big catch for us. Would have been several hundred jobs. Uh, they chose to stay where they are located now and, and expand where they are, and that happens sometimes when they faced with the situation, do they stay or do they look somewhere else? And 
and we were on the short list, and we thought we had a good, good shot at it. It didn't turn out, but uh, the problem is, is having, having a, a site ready site, uh, ready to go when they're looking. Not well. We'll have it ready in eight months or one year or a year and a half. So our plan right now is to build a hangar and build some office space. About. I don't, I'll let John get into the numbers, but uh, over half of the cost, we feel like we can uh, get funded through the aeronautics division. So it's a, it, it's a good deal for us. Now that money's not gonna be there very long. We need to act in order to obtain that money. And we need uh, a commitment from funds for both Smyrna and uh, Rutherford County quickly. Uh, now. They're not asking us to have the money in hand, but they want to know that, that we right. can fund our part of it if they give us the grants. So have, you, have you all talked to Smyrna already? We're in the process. We've had discussions with them. We've not formally met with their council yet. We've met with the mayor a couple of times, just like we've met with, with, with your mayor. And uh, so uh, they're, very, they're very favorable. We don't have a firm commitment as we don't with the county either, right. so that's kind of where we are with What tenants are out there now, as far as office? And okay. We, we have about 35 different tenants. Okay. Probably some of our big ones are <coughs> Nissan, uh, Corporate Flight Management, Louisiana Pacific. We just signed a new company with the Blimps. I don't know if you may have seen that, but if you don't, you'll see more Blimps overhead <laughs> these days because uh, this is their East Coast maintenance operation now. How, how many people are employed? At the roughly, or do you on know? The, on, on the, the site, site every day is around seven to eight hundred people. With this, with this additional um, development, what's the potential of jobs that could be brought back in here in Rutherford County? Uh, we figured that at about sixty jobs, and and the spinoff on that would, of course, have a good rippling effect. You what what as far as yearly salary range? Um, the good thing with aviation jobs are they're pretty highly skilled and technical jobs that support MTSU as well. So the range there, uh, annual range, you know, salary range is around forty or fifty thousand. Uh, we did an economic impact study last year, and uh, regionally it has about the airport itself has about a seventy million dollar impact on the community. So that's a big economic yeah. engine. Mm -hmm. To clarify what John said, that this um, this structure that we're proposing the bill that's going to help us pay the money back is about 60 jobs but oh, right. we're going to have site ready uh, another 40 acres to 50 acres that would be uh, good with the improvements the, the roads and utilities that someone else could come in and take a piece of that or have several companies that could come in and take portions of that uh, and how many jobs they would bring, I don't know. The one we were working with that, that, that we didn't get was, was 450 jobs. And they needed about 25 acres. So uh, we're excited that we, you know, we're, we're doing something that has a lot of upside and potential. And to say how much it is, it, it, we don't know until the company, you know, until we land something. Would they, is a situation where they would build their own building or you guys would build it and rent to them or how would that work? That, more than likely they would come in and build their own building. Now they'll never own the land and that's and that's one issue The Rutherford County and Smyrna is always going to own okay. that land. We can't sell that land. But so they we, would own the building. They'd own the building and we, we would, uh, depending, we have a we have a formula of develop the policy on how long a lease we would give to a, a potential uh, tenant on the airport based on their investment. So the larger the investment, the longer the lease that, that we would grant them. And, and typically the way that works uh, with aviation development, at the end of that lease, that building becomes ours. Right. One good thing we got going for us as well, a selling point, you know, right here in the southeast of the United States, we're, we're Geographic the, the population, they could be in anywhere within three hours. Mm -hmm. or, uh, as far as flying, it could be that's, within an hour. Mm -hmm. That's exactly why uh, 
the airship company came here. And we have another short-term operation this summer with the NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, is going to be flying out of Smyrna to Chicago, down to Texas, to the East Coast, they, doing air sampling. That's the whole reason they chose us, right. because of our infrastructure and our geography. Right. It's very attractive to people. Yeah. Any more questions? Well, we're going to find out how much. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to show you? On the, on the map here, I can briefly just, just show you a little bit more of our development. I know uh, what's going on. Just to kind of show you where we're at, this is Sam Ridley Parkway here. Here's the terminal, and as Mike mentioned earlier, the, the loans we've had in the past went to build all the utilities that brought us over to this side. And it wasn't too many years ago that all looked just like this, it was just all trees. So those utilities helped us build the terminal and this kind of cornerstone of what we call the airport business park. Um, we have then gotten some grants from the FAA to build this road, which is Thunderbird Drive, and the utility down to this point. And eventually this road will go on through the development. Um, but what we're looking at for this project is to take it at the end of Thunderbird Drive where the utilities end now and take it out toward the taxiway, build a hangar out here, have all this site prep next to it with about 50 acres for a future development. So when we get another company knocking at our door like the one we've been talking to, we're ready and they can just fit right in. And this is really nothing uh, new. We've been, we have a 20-year master plan that we update about every five or 10 years. So all this that we've been doing, we've been building this direction. We, we kind of slowed down a little bit like everyone else after 2008, but um, we do feel the timing is good based on our interest in, in the property itself, the interest rates that are out there right now, um, we think it's a good time in, in our location. So that's where it's located. Um, this kind of matches what you have there in your, in your map, with your map. So this green area is what we were talking about building uh, with some of these taxiways. The road, we're gonna build this and all the utilities. So all these sites will be prepped and ready, ready to go. And we're sizing this hangar so that we can uh, accommodate just about any, well, the largest corporate jet that's out there, Gulfstream 5. So those Gulfstream 5s come with big companies like Nissan and so forth. And that's who we also are marketing to uh, as a whole for Rutherford County. So it's kind of nice if we can be out talking to people and say, you know, we also have a hangar here for your airplane. And uh, this is just a rendering kind of, uh, here's the terminal over here, here's Thunderbird Drive. This is the road we're going to build a hangar over in this area. And then this is how we anticipate it developing and then on to the north. So we've, we've done a lot of studying on this, and uh, we think we've done our homework pretty well. We're excited about it. I think the time's right. Okay, John, I think now that you've given them a picture of what you want to do, they've got, they all have a copy of this on their iPad there as far as. They have all three scenarios, okay. depending on what the cost of money might be, 2%, 3%, or 4%. But they can see uh, a pro forma on what uh, this cost and how it would be projected and how they can pay it back. So you want to go with to, to that? Their, uh, their first page is the um, estimated revenue. Is the first page the 4%? This one. Or the no. Oh, okay, the estimated revenue. Okay. okay. Uh, that uh, that page we were we're kind of conservative there, basing it on a 75 percent occupancy rate, and those prices per square foot are, are fairly conservative as well. Uh, so you can see our net income there, monthly income, 16,250. Uh, we've been running 100 percent. We do have some interest in the hangar already, so we would hope to be able to fill it pretty quick. Uh, so if you go, the first one is there two percent. First one's two percent. Okay, that's the one we really want. Is that two percent? <laughs> <laughs> so that's a good place to start. Um, obviously, the two percent we're going to have a bigger return on our investment. But um, backing up a little bit, what what makes it helps our formula here in our pro forma is that the IDB Industrial Development Board was kind enough to grant us three hundred and thirty thousand dollars toward this project. So. 
Uh, I think they believe in it and they see us as a, a good economic engine for Rutherford County as well. So we've taken that off the top. Um, and the FAA money is in there. We're hoping to get, at the end of the day, almost $5 million from the FAA. So there is an existing loan out there uh, for Rutherford County and Smyrna that we've been paying on and paying on. And the balance for Rutherford County at this point in time is 391146 And what we're looking at for the Rutherford County loan, 60% uh, of what the total we need is two. Two million four hundred forty-one thousand one fifty-six. So the total to finance is two million eight hundred thirty-two thousand three hundred and two dollars. Uh, and we're we base this on a twenty-year amortization rate. Um, and of course, we ran the three scenarios: of two percent, three percent, and four percent. So uh, obviously, our payment goes up uh, and our net income goes down. But uh, as those rates go up, we. Uh, we feel like we can we can meet these obligations. We, the board has discussed this at length, the Airport Authority Board, uh, over the past six six or eight months. <coughs> Our uh, estimates for hangar space uh, for construction, <coughs> we based a hangar on $127 per square foot, and office space at $180 per square foot. Lisa, are we going to have to go to the bond market on this? Yes, it but not immediately. What? Um, as you, I guess it's the third page on your, well, yeah, the third one, he's talking, third of seven, where he's giving you the listing of what all you would need. Um, he's asking to, again, um, roll that existing loan into this one to, for 2.8 million. What we would do initially is to have an interfund loan fund note between the debt service fund mm -hmm. and the industrial development to provide the funding and then when we go to market then we would just replace it with this two percent usually what are we getting well that's we asked them to provide it just so we, we could see the performance statements what they would look like if it was at two three and four percent um, our last non-taxable was 2.5 two, 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 two four two two four two So we're looking at bottom line. If, if you just look at the big numbers, we're looking at a nine point uh, three million dollar project. We hope to get federal funds of uh, four point nine or, or a little over half of the money would be federally funded. Uh, we're on a timeline with with the aeronautics division. They they have money now. We've had some discussions with them. Uh, they have uh, they've not made a formal commitment, but they have indicated that they're leaning very favorably. Uh, they like what we're doing at the airport. Uh, they're very supportive of, of the projects we've had in the past, and they see that the, you know we have potential on this project. So uh, we feel we feel fairly confident. We feel fairly good. Although that's another board that we have to meet with and and uh, uh, sell this project too. So, uh, but they want to know that we have uh, a commitment locally to, to fund our share of the project before they'll uh, make a commitment. Right. Mm -hmm. it, if, oh, go ahead, Mayor. Go ahead, I was going to think they might want to go back to this. I mean, for example, on <clears throat> one of these pages where we are on the 4%, which was, I think is earlier, would be less than that. <clears throat> On that pro forma, they have a projected net monthly profit of $43,740 with a debt service of 29505 So, And again, I think they computed this at 75% occupancy. So yeah. this should give them a net, even after the payment of debt service, $14,235 per month. So, and John or Mike, you might, we've looked, Lisa and I sort of looked at their balance sheet. Uh, they've been a very, very prudent manager and operator down there. They do have, I guess you could call them some funds available in the event something happened. They, they're not, uh, they do have some cash. Yeah. Uh, they can weather the storm a little they bit. Got, they have a little weather the storm money available. 
and, and this money that uh, it was fourteen thousand a month, um, that money goes right back into the airport for other capital projects. You know, maintaining the runways and taxiways mm -hmm. and lighting and so forth. So, so if, we, if we go to the market and we get two and a half, roughly like we did the last time, are we, is that what we're going to charge them, or we're going to charge well, them three percent? I was going to ask. I mean, that's kind of where you know if we could write the stuff into that whatever we borrow the money I mean that's one option whatever we borrowed at that's what we would extend to them it'd be nice if we could get 2% I will, well, <laughs> I, well, I yeah, will say that the loan that they've got now that they're paying 6% to the right. county yeah, so we're going to help them a little bit and hurt ourselves just a little you might say but when you really look at it it is ours. We are them <laughs> in that respect. But too, one thing, I mean, it's an economic development yeah. issue that, you know, we've got, Rutherford County has been, I, I mean, my travel is my job now. I travel all over the state, and there are some counties that are, are not like Rutherford County. And the unemployment rate in Rutherford County is a whole lot better than it is in some areas. And, and, and what we've got to do as a county, we've got to provide those jobs for the kids coming out of school now, because like people did when we were coming up, mm -hmm. and that's just, that's the way I look at this. I mean, it's it's providing a future for some of these people coming out of school now for a job, it's, keep them here. It's come a long way since they gave it to, since Nashville gave it to us. Mm -hmm. It has come a long ways, and I remember Mr. Fitzgerald and Mr. Beatty going to Washington, and mm -hmm. they were received highly received and they knew about the airport so we are known worldwide Absolutely. not because some of the planes you build goes to south of us <laughs> all over the world <laughs> they do. do do your charts include the revenue from this project from the new hangars and the new office space Basically, it is calculated it is in, in here the, uh, um, I mean, I know that the projected revenue is supposed to be a little over sixteen thousand dollars a month, and yeah. that's in the. It says uh, there's one line that says income from new hangar, one hundred ninety-five thousand. About three quarters of the way down. Yeah. Uh, so it is. It is in there. Okay, so it's in there at seventy-five percent occupancy. So we built a little cushion. If if the FAA doesn't come across with their their part of it, so basically it's it's a dead issue. Is that, is that we we need their funding to make it work okay yeah. <clears throat> on this document here does it show what what's your month the be the monthly payment move move one page one way or the other there mr Gucci. Yeah. and that, there you go look at that one that, oh, yeah, that's yeah. your monthly yeah. right. it's the last next to the last item projected debt service 29, 20, 20, 27 thousand whatever I'm interest sorry. rate you have there that <clears throat> Our four percent there on that one was twenty nine five. Twenty nine five oh five is the monthly uh, debt service requirement. It looks like, like since the month monthly debt service requirements are a little bit more than the projected rent at seventy five percent occupancy, you're using some profit you otherwise would have gotten to, to offset. We are. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. I mean, overall the airport's yeah. profitable, but the the projected rent is about sixteen thousand, and the debt payments are a, a little bit more. Yeah, right. But I guess, in all fairness, the debt payments are also including some prior debt. That's true. Our debt service now is uh, ten thousand dollars a month. Okay. So, uh, when we roll that into the the new loan, it bumps it up nineteen thousand on the on the uh, uh, four percent scenario. So the uh, the estimated income is a one ninety five uh, a year. So, yeah, we're a little bit we're a little bit short, but we can. We're also conservative on what we're projecting. Now, we asked IDB for a million dollars and we didn't get it. Uh, <laughs> we went back; they cut it a little bit. So we went back and and revised, downsized the the building a little bit. Uh, which. We're not, we don't want to walk into this and have to back up. We don't want to, we feel very confident that these numbers are good and we'll be able to meet our obligation. If, if we didn't, we wouldn't be here, I'll tell you that. 
Let me ask you this. If, if we were to do this, is this going to cost the county taxpayers to, uh, any type of tax increase, anything? Well, I mean, that's what they're showing, is that they'll they'll meet their I, 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 obligation. Right. Now, if, if... I'm just saying because if somebody asks us, you if know... If a meteor hit the thing and they can <laughs> no the longer operate wings, yeah. <laughs> and they can't produce revenue, then the they county would be responsible for the payment of the... Of, the, of our, the, our debt oh, that we're taking out right. to give them. And well, we're the county and the city's child. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot of children. <laughs> <laughs> but they're all not as good as this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A lot of them don't bring in revenue, though. <laughs> well, I made the comment today that, that they operate so well we forget that they're a part of us. Mm -hmm. Right. Any more questions? One, one other item that I could point out, if I could borrow your little map there, um, is that this property around this development, as that leases out and at our current rates that we normally charge for land leases, that when it's filled up would produce about another 175000 a year. So this is really a good catalyst to make the rest of this development. So that's not shown in any of these spreadsheets, but... It's, the part, you know, it's, it's in there for the future. On the projected 75% occupancy rate, monthly income of 16250 That that would be gravy on top of, am I understanding that correct, that like yeah. you have $19,000 left over on that first one. Per month. I think it's in there. They've already used that. That's, yeah, that's in it. there? Okay. That is you in said there. That, okay, you, right. you've already answered that question, I think. Yeah. Okay, I see. But 75% to 100% is right. not in there. We would hope we would fill it up. Any more questions? How much are you, now how much are you asking from us? 2.8. They, they currently still owe us 391000 So the new money is 244. But when right. we get through with this, they'll, they'll owe us 2.832. From here, do, do you need the commitment? Do we need to, I mean, is it, what are you needing from us to go on with your? We would like to move it through the committee so that when we go to the FAA, we can confidently say, yes, we have the money. So, I mean, we so don't have to have asking, the money, but in hand. We'll go from here to budget to say yeah. that you're authorizing the issuance of, of a $2.8 million. Yes. No. We may not execute it, but exactly. you want that there. Yes. Uh -huh. Hopefully be. by the next commission meeting. Well, maybe we ought to yeah. sort of round that 2.8 up a little bit. Uh, you know, that it could be... Not to exceed... Not to exceed 2.9 or something. Uh -huh. yeah. That might be a um, estimate. I'd like to make a motion that we... You, you recommend to the budget to committee. Recommend to budget committee that we not go over 2.9 in in the concept of this and and pass through whatever interest rate we yeah. obtain through the borrowing that this would be what they would be obligated to pay right or and a 20 it, 20 year amortization you did well <laughs> 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 and, is that a motion a second i'll second that motion. Got a second for commissioner quality and pulls their existing note into yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's right. We've got to do that too. Yeah. Combine all into one. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say something. Go ahead. But, but look at this, and, and I'm, I'm looking at it as a, as a business plan, mm -hmm. and I think this is very good. I think it's, it's going to, it shows that y'all are going to pay us back, and it, it's, um, I think it's great. I think we need to move on this, and I think we need to do it for the jobs for Rutherford County. Mm -hmm. It's going to be an impact. Thanks. It will. It's, it's a very clean business out there, too. Mm -hmm. they have, I mean, everything is spotless just about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they have a good team. You well, do. You really do. Well, <coughs> their past record shows that they've been prosperous in that area. And like you said, we hadn't had to bail them out or anything over that period of time. So I don't see anything wrong with this. Well, we've done the same addition. thing with them in the past. We've also done the same thing with community care. And we built community care out there. And 
to, to a prosperous yeah. you know, nursing home facility. So, yeah. you know. Any more discussion? You want to read the motion? <laughs> <laughs> Make sure we got it all in there. Recommend to the budget committee not to go over 2.9 million in the SRCAA concept uh, and pass through the interest rate received at a 20 year amortization and fold the existing note in this borrowing. Very good. Any more discussion? No, call it. <laughs> call for the roll. roll call. Commissioner Baum? Yes. Commissioner Coggin? Yes. Commissioner Cook? Yes. Commissioner Farley? Yes. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner McAdoo? Yes. I'm here for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Only thing I can say. Mm -hmm. Only thing I can say is uh, be available to attend budget. Yeah. We will be. Commissioner <laughs> <laughs> Ball will be able to help me out. Okay. <laughs> we'll meet uh, May 9th. May 9th. And then May 16th yeah. for the commission. Uh, you'll be there. Okay. Thank you very much. That wasn't bad, was it, mine? No, not bad at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next on the agenda, new judicial building. Okay. We're going to ask Ms. Bolin to join us up here. And Ms. Nolan. Bolin and Nolan. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to allow for it. No. <laughs> okay. Well, what we want to do tonight is just sort of a restart this discussion that's been going on. I know prior to 2002, this is when this discovery has been uh, continuing regarding what we're going to do about a new just judicial. But what I want to do tonight, and Ms. Bolin and Ms. Nolan can help is just sort of revisit, bring us back up to speed on where, we, where we've been and where that leaves us and what our potential options might be from this point forward, okay? So, if you'll bear with me, I'm gonna, uh, sometimes I get too fast. But anyway, <laughs> if you want to stop me or ask some questions, okay. But this document right here, and Ms. Cook probably still has her somewhere, and, were you, you were, were you here, Mr. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So four of these two doctors. This, <laughs> this is the first uh, facility study that was made in December of 2002. But all of that to say, you know full well that as a result of this study and discussion that the commission had had for an extended period of time, we do own all the property over on Maple Street there, which is across the street from our clerk's building that's been purchased for the purpose of putting this property, this judicial building over there when you build it, all right? Saying that to say, we're gonna sort of hit the high spots and Ms. Bowen in particular can fill in some of these. <coughs> I guess I told you a couple months ago that this may be a, an opportunity, a, a bit of window of opportunity that we might can think about this in a little more serious way than we have the last several years. It's a big, big project, and it's a little bit, it's so big it's sort of scary, but we build high schools that cost this much. But anyway, uh, this is a 50 to $60 million project. Ms. Bowen and the DA and the judges and the sheriff and others were in our annual sort of security, courthouse security meeting and every time we have these meetings, it's, it's evident that the age of that building we have over there uh, and the changes that we've had in, since it was built uh, in our society and in the need for security has continued to increase every single year. And quite honestly, there's no way for us to, to really provide the, the security that needs to be provided in today's environment. So. I won't say much more than that except to say there are any number of deficiencies that we really should address. We, we're not quite in the position to address them with the structure over there. So I think 
sometimes you can't measure the cost of that or the liability of that, but it's significant. And we should, uh, that's one of the main reasons I think we need to move on, not to say anything about the inadequacies of the space that we have in, in many, many areas. Secondly, or thirdly, whatever you want to call it, those two old buildings over there, the coin building and the old bank building that is, that we, coin building we're using to allow where domestic violence is in there and we let our public defender and our DA talk to their clients and she's occupying the other part of the building. Those two buildings, if we can do this, I mean, we don't have any plan for them except take them down. I mean, they are becoming every year more and more of a liability. And if we're gonna stay there a few more years, Really and truly, we ought to spend at least a half million dollars that we to keep them. To, and I, I hate to put good money after bad, but we're we're to the point where we really seriously going to have to spend some really serious money to uh, to be able to continue to use those facilities. Okay. So I'm not telling you anything that you didn't know in 2002. Just a quick question right now on that uh, cost. Was the discussion to build a garage also? Yes, sir. Is that part of I, the... That's part of this. Th that's part of the 50 to 60? Yeah, that will be okay. necessary. But, necessary. But, but that garage wasn't to put fix uh, for parking for nothing but like a sheriff's department and some employees and stuff? I no, it would be a full parking garage. It would be a full, park. a full parking garage. Park. There would be underground, there would be an underground sally port and underground parking to bring. But that's not, we're talking about a for the visitors and the public and all of our employees well, this this is what best I can remember and I've slept since then. But we were at we, a holiday inn. Yeah, the holiday yes. inn. <laughs> the were the were the property the Lyles property that we took. Across the street there we were talking at one time taking where the Letitia Electric, we were talking about putting a parking garage over there because of some issues. Somewhere you y'all remember? I do. Across the street. Yeah, well, about these plan, these, this plan here in particular showed the parking garage going on the property where the county clerk's building is located. Right. In their parking in their area. In their parking lot. So building the parking you have those two lot. options to consider. You have the option of, of the parking garage placed over there, or you can place it on the property we have on the other block across the street. There's, a, I think, That's enough room to put there. both the parking garage and this judicial building if you choose to do that. So the, the, where you put that parking will have to be determined. But what she's saying is there's a limited amount of parking underneath the proposed buildings for the prisoners to well, come That's into, probably what I was thinking and about. And judges and certain other people to have their uh, secure parking places even there and then they go up. Another thing would happen right now when we bring inmates in over there, they come right in the building with every other person that's there for whatever purpose and and they go up the same elevator as our public people do and the judges so this would this study plus the second study both recognize the need to put separate means of access between our the people that are coming to the inmates and the, and the, all of the other people that use these and share these facilities okay but you can read this and it's still the buildings included in this plan have major deficiencies and are functionally obsolete, especially the coin building and, mm. and the old bank building. So there's no new news here. That That's, was in 2002. 2002. That was in 2002. <laughs> so we've, we've got 11 more years of, <laughs> of service out of these from a plan that you embarked upon before any of us at this table were even here. So uh, we're not telling you anything that y'all haven't already wrestled with. In addition, the buildings have no expansion capabilities and only limited adaptation potential. I'm just, I'm not gonna read all this, but uh, I think you're getting the picture of where we are. Both of these reports had population projections and use, usage projections. We've already exceeded, 2002 said that in 2010, we would have 238,000 people in this county. They said in 2020, we'd have 275,000. Well, the latest estimate is 270,000 plus, and we're at 2013, so we've already 
much exceeded these uh, these numbers here. This, this is something else that you need to confirm if we're going to move forward. All of this discussion and this had a lot of attention finally round, I wound up with a conclusion that this building needs to stay in downtown in the close proximity to where it is now. Um, I think that was a consensus. It wasn't 100%, but it was pretty, pretty strong consensus that the courts and their related uses have a net positive economic impact in this area and uh, employment-wise and otherwise and you came to the conclusion, at least this report did, and I think the commission supported mm -hmm. that direction. And because clearly you took initiative to actually purchase all of that property over there. So some did, some did. But it, it, you, <laughs> enough. Enough. Majority <laughs> rule. A majority passed. There's two right here that did. <laughs> <laughs> enough of you voted for that <laughs> to spend the money to uh, condemn that property and we now so own it and uh, it's available yeah. and needs to be used for, that, for the very purpose you acquired it. Okay. If I slow up here, Ms. Bowling, you can jump right in, okay? <laughs> well, and even the 2002 report sort of reflects the same amount of square footage that this 2000 and whatever couple three years ago we did but anyway this building is going to have uh, gross square footage the first report said 106 to 137 thousand square feet uh, let's see what did I do with all my stuff here I must have left some other reports mm -hmm. anyway hold on Where the, I had copies for all these folks did I bring them up here I may have sent Lisa back down there Lisa, go down there, please. What are these? Hold on, here we got them. Here, go ahead and pass these yeah. out. I'm not going to jump to this completely, but in this particular one, sort of the last iteration on the, the most current report that we had, which was April of 2008, said that the new courthouse, including the secured parking, would be about 184,000 square feet. So these reports are both in the neighborhood. Anyway, they recommended a new ju judicial center be located near but not on the square, preferably within the proposed county services area to the north is where you just have already acquired those properties. Okay, since all of this has taken place, we've moved out of that building we moved the uh, to the youth services, and we've already ended. And we moved the we built the juvenile the services building, so that's already been taken care of. Okay. As far as what we do with this building over here, where you sort of build all this, that's still up for you to decide. There's enough square footage in this last proposal to move everything in the building that's currently there, everything, to the new building. Now, one can decide if, if that needs to be revisited. And uh, I haven't had any, I haven't discussed with anybody over there any other thoughts along that line, but we, I guess I'll go, I'll make one step further We've got another building full of folks over here across the street in what we call the old Goldstein building. And if we can get those people out of there, my personal opinion, it would sort of be like the coin building and the old bank building. It should be taken down. Uh, it's, that structure is- Would you put them in the same building? And I, we could potentially, there's more than enough room over there for them, for all of those departments and others maybe to move into that. Goldstein has been a problem ever since I've been on the county commission. Yeah. Uh, it's the courts that were put over there, is that both civil and criminal? Yeah, all yeah. of them. All all one all building. Everything has the ability to be placed over there. What would you then do with the current building? Which one? The, the judicial these, building? Yeah, the, I, That's what he was Building just... and codes, planning, the election commission, and there's room for other things if we so choose. 
it's that judicial building quote that we, the brick five story building I mean structurally it's concrete and brick I mean it's uh, it'll be there a while and it, it could be converted it's going to take dollars to convert it but it has potential what would you do then with the buildings where these other groups are coming from? this building across the street here I mean, I, mean, I know you said tear it down, but I'm wondering, would you sell the property and try and get well, some offset revenue? Could. What I would think, I told Ms. Bowling this, this is where we tear down, we got the bank building and the coin building. I really would like for us to think seriously about just leaving that as open space, you know, a little, a little oh, landscape it decorated and, and just, it would be, add a whole lot to the downtown. Oh, you could build office spaces there, whatever you want to, but I, I think, You'd have to really decide about that and have a lot of discussion. But it sounds like there wouldn't be any offsetting revenue by moving nope. out of an existing nope. building into a new one. And I don't think so, because none of those I don't those buildings they don't have the potential to move forward and can, for a continued much longer existence. And neither does this one over here. This building over here is largely wood frame construction. Okay. Needs come down. Like anyway, uh, vacant properties that it both of these studies started. estimated we needed 300 to 400 spaces in a parking garage of some sort. All right. Ms. Bowling, you want to add anything here? Well, just to again confirm the exponential growth that we've had, our case management system only goes back to the 90s. But between nine, 1990 and 2010, we've had a 125% increase in case volume. If we take the numbers and extrapolate it out to 2015, we're gonna, we'll see about 175% increase over that 25 year span. So we're, we'll hit over 50,000 cases that run through that building. One of the things that was interesting at our court security meeting, uh, Randy, our court security officer indicated that 259,000 people went through the magnetometer last year. That's almost as many people that actually live in Rutherford County and that doesn't include people who don't have to go through it like the, our staff, the attorneys, the law enforcement community. Um, certainly there's some repeat customers that are going through those but those bodies are literally in that building throughout that year so we're seeing a huge volume of traffic and they're coming in through one door and going out through one door it's it's just a real big challenge and tomorrow we have a thousand people on three dockets so if you would like to come by and see how that works you're more than welcome between 9 and 10 to just stop by and see how that works for us Give me your figures again from 1990 to now. In 1990, we had 18,599 cases. Okay, now, now what I got in my mind on your figures, the county was 115,000? Something like and, that. And the percentage of the county that's gone up, your work has gone up though. Correct, correct, absolutely. That's what I was comparing it with, numbers Absolutely. with numbers. Yes, yeah. Um, and then in 2010, we had 41,000. And this, of course, is just in my offices. That doesn't include probate. That also has court in there. It doesn't include the clerk and master's office that has court in there and the chancery court. So this, these are just figures for my own mm -hmm. statistics. The $50 million question. Yes. How much of a tax increase is it going to cost for us to build this? Okay, let's talk about that. Yeah. Well, while, she's, while she's getting that out, let's see. we got Mr. Bratcher in here. Mr. Bratcher, did you want to add anything to what Ms. Uh, Boland just said here? Well, we are wet on 2, 4, 3rd, and 7th.
we are doing everything that we can to save space. We're, we're out of space, but we're doing everything that we can. And, and both uh, both Bowling and both the and I are uh, moving towards digital storage of, of documents as fast as we can. And we really save, already saved a lot of money and uh, saved a lot of space. Um, it's not going to have to be taken up from the, from the archive. Is it fair to say you you support the the need for yes sir this <laughs> even if it calls for a tax increase no that on me Mr. I'm saying we uh, we need the we we need the, the building you know it's not just the space uh, we probably see more of what I'm going to talk about in a minute on the civil side you know we deal with not only divorces, but also probate. We also deal with land disputes, that sort of thing. Uh, I, I had to get in, in between somebody uh, just last week. Uh, two great big shouting people at, at one another and you know, get a, get the security to, to come up. And, you know, we're, I have a dock at a couple of days a, a week uh, myself. And, you know, I, I have people that somebody's going to leave that courtroom unhappy in a, in a divorce matter, and then I have to walk out in the, the, the hallways with them. And, and, and well, I had well, two of them that were trying to contact me last week after they got. Yeah, well, that's why. I, that's why I mean, <laughs> use elect official. Uh, no, that's you're going to elect. I thought you were. Elected. You're appointed. Okay. Appointed. I was thinking like, you were elected. I'm sorry. No, the six-year term. Yeah, and I just you know. Well, he is an elected official. Absolutely. But those of us that are in some of these positions, you know, we don't want a property tax increase. But I believe it's critical enough the exposure that we have to the liabilities absolutely. that uh, I think it's probably an investment that's past time. Oh, I, I mean, I can see the need, you know, and just how we're, how we're going to pay for it. Yeah. Absolutely. And we're going to let Ms. Nolan sort of address that just a little bit. Before we get to that, well, <coughs> on these floors, and I, I see where everything is going, where would you propose to put the building and codes and judicial building? Right over judicial here. Building. In the judicial in the, building. In the, in the, building. the, in the current five-story oh, structure. You, oh, yeah. So would all these folks to come? Could, could come over here into right. the building after we vacate that. And then the coin building would take down. Just take it down. Correct. Yeah. And then no bank take bill. this down. I think they'd take that down personally. That's but this is something you would have to okay. have a lot more discussion on. So that this yeah, building is more safe or oh yes. better for oh, yeah. it's, oh, yeah. it's, it's a steel a steel frame a yeah. steel frame that's concrete right. structure. Okay. Thank you. Okay. The one I'd like to start with is this one, the short one. And this is just a form that I use to try to keep up with what what is being spoken about and try to plan out borrowings um, you and I think one of the reasons why we're talking about this now is that that appears to be a window of time when we're not building school after school after school <laughs> and the back page of this is built from the school the school board's um, five-year capital project plan of when they need schools opened and you can see on this back page they're anticipating a lot of additions not new schools until um, fall of 17 when they like and the next one on the board is a high school uh, but the year after that 18 is, is a middle school and an elementary school so when you back up to that first page then I just start timing well if they if they want the schools to open then when would we start needing the money and that's what what this is just timing where I would think time so when you see total for schools can run across there and these are my estimates of when we would need timing of, of borrowing so I've dropped in there then when is a potential good time for us to borrow and kind of level the the borrowings out so you can see with the schools and ours <coughs> over was it one two three four five years a potential of 209 million dollars needed but what 
course, what's in there are all those schools. And only on the general side do we talk about um, the parking garage. I've got the airport improvement. You can see I, I had the, an earlier amount on that. Um, I, have y'all talked about archive expansion any or just no. alluded to it? Well, we, yes, they made their presentation here no, just not. in concept. Right. But that's so, as far so as we've gone. Now that I just put things on here as I hear it and try to plan for it. So um, there's always roads coming on. Can tell, remind us what was the $8 million parking garage? Well, what this is what we're talking about. You need to build, build a parking garage along with the oh, uh, okay. so you course center. And, and I guess when I was doing this, solely my mind is, well, you would... If you're going to build a garage where the clerk's office is, you would have to do that first because all those people would be parking. It's got to go go somewhere. So I did. I again, see it's part of this project. Yeah, it's part, part of it. It's just yeah. there first. Well, well, is, it, is the forty million or the fifty million dollars is it including yep. the parking? No, it'll be it'll be fifty. Well, somewhere between I've, fifty and sixty, depending on how much of this building we build out. Looks like it's fifty-eight million on here. Correct. Well, mm -hmm. I did fifty. Well, I had yeah. fifty. With the, with the I had eight garage. for the garage and fifty, fifty for the justice mm -hmm. center. Until we have garage. Firm, um, firm. That's where I got my little numbers. separate bed. Yeah, yeah. Oh, here it's. Yeah. So all that to say is that they're, as far as you know, trying to put this in before we have another onslaught of. Um, and you can see why if they wanted the that high school to come open in fall of 17 it takes two years to build the high school so you know in with this is kind of borrowing some money on that school along as we go so you can see I just want you to look at the bottom 22.743251598232 so that kind of I want you to go to the long sheet now so on the left side, you've got the years in numbers, and then you see the need, 21, 2, 43, 3, 51, 59, 9, and 32. That just follows those numbers that I just typed around the bottom, like if we need those. So without going in how I come up with all the numbers to the left of it, if you can follow, we'll see on top where there's a number five, and you see down there's a capacity. There appears to be capacity in the 20, the 13, 14 fiscal, no, no, 14, 15 fiscal year of $1.4 million. Um, that would service debt of 21 million at 3%, 20 million at three and a half. But I need 43. And I need 20 million, 21 million before that. So, what this tells me, of course, all these are projections, is our current debt service probably wouldn't, wouldn't totally fund it. We would have to need, we would need some additional funding. I can't say that we cannot do this without a tax increase. Um, but I'm not at the point where I could say we need 37 cents or we need 10 cents, we need 5 cents. I'm not there yet. I just want you to get a feel two things. One, there's opportunities, and you've already seen how we've had to build the schools, and there seems to be an opportunity now and that there would be a potential. Two, if we don't have to build that high school as soon as we do, then it, you know, we can get some. I mean, I understand the need of that, but I mean, I, until I know exactly or have a pretty good idea if there's going to be what type of increase or no increase. I would say Okay, if, let's do it this way. At 13-14, in the 13-14 fiscal year, if we were gonna do all of this and get ready to borrow, um, I'm saying we need it in the fall, 20 some million dollars. That's taken into account the school's needs to. Um, I need 21. I don't have it, but that next year, I need about one, one million. Four, I guess on that first year, I would need uh, probably three or four cents. Three cents would be six, seven, eight, not quite 
three cents. So you're saying in 14, 15, there would need to be three cents? At 13, 14, I need three cents. So this coming budget year, you would need three cents? Everything is timing. Everything is timing. I say that I need three cents just because if I were to, to do $21 million, I would need, um, let me see. She's got 21 million, she, she needs 22.7. Yeah. She's got enough capacity for 21. Right. Three percent. Um, I guess I could. Because if you borrow money in if the I spring, borrow it, the spring in of the, 14, we don't even pay any of it back until that's what I was saying. I was say, if we there, wait till the spring here. to do it, yeah, then it really doesn't affect the, the budget until yeah. the following year. You've got 21 to pay back 22 if you wait till next yeah. spring. If I, if I do it, if I wait till next spring, like you said, then I would have the capacity in the next year to to fund that. Wait till the spring of 14. Yes. Wait until the spring of 14 to borrow the 21, and then I'd have the capacity in the next year to pay it. And then, if you wait for the next 43, then you potentially would have that in the next year. You've got 40 available right. for the next 43, so it's, yeah. it's potentially cl very close. Yeah. How much debt are we paying down there on a yearly basis, debt oh, service? About 25 million. 25, 25 million, million, million a year, what we, yeah, mm -hmm. we're paying down each year now. I guess we get the impression that one of the reasons we're discussing this right now is because this capital project doesn't face as much competition from other capital projects at the moment, like other schools. But of course, money's fungible. What about competition from non-capital projects in the budget, from other, other funds in the budget? It's not just that this money could be, doesn't necessarily have to be used for a lot of new schools right now, but we could use this money to pay for a, a portion of other expenses, whether it's SROs or more cop cars or that's what you have more to health do. insurance premiums. I mean, just by reallocating what portion of the tax rate we put into yeah. this account. You can absolutely, you can do that. Mm -hmm. You can reduce the pennies in the debt service reserve uh, and push them over somewhere else. That's a, that's your choice. Which would then, <coughs> this doesn't work out as well. Well, I mean, we I guess I just asked the question because this account looks like it's very, very close to pulling this off. But what about the, what will the other accounts look like? Well, we won't know until we get a little closer to, Still too premature. to, to the end of May, but it, it's, uh, it's it, not looking promising for this coming, looking good. Coming, coming year. <laughs> Especially when we're giving money what back. <laughs> no, <laughs> they don't need to be making well, breaking will, the laws where they have to come uh, in. Well, on the airport improvement, I mean, theoretically, yeah. they're going, we're going to have revenue to take That'll care of. That'll be revenue coming. So that's yeah. a little bit more revenue to take care of that. Because I'm not showing that revenue in here. Right. So you can really reduce your 22.7 by two and a half because mm -hmm. you've got the revenue for that piece. Maybe that's, has that been done on the chart? Just because in this one of the far left columns it says the need is twenty one point two million. Maybe the no, I I don't have the. I think what he's saying is I don't have showing the revenue coming in. Uh, oh, okay, okay. From the airport to pay back that note. And the archive expansion is not getting very much traction. So I mean, there's moving pieces here. And the eight million on the parking garage. I mean, the, our estimates are six million a little bit. So, you know, we don't know if that's too much or not either. Right. I, I guess I just <coughs> made the comment that I did because this account by itself really doesn't look that discouraging. <coughs> but some of the other it's the other funds that, that, that I mean, it's ironic issue. because it seems like a couple of years ago the debt service account was the one that was in the worst shape. Yeah, but if you remember, we did four refundings to, to right. get We've this saved fund some relief. No, it's just, just so something like right. this. Right, and so I'm, I'm just saying this account isn't in as bad a shape as, 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 it, once was. as it once was, and as I'm yeah. concerned some of the other ones <coughs> might be. So right now the money is coming over from the courts are going into the general fund, right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. with that money coming in, I remember several years ago we took money from over there to uh, fund fire engines for the K 
County. That's 1990. Yeah, that that was when that development tax. That, that was the no, second round. That was coming out of legal funds from over there. Oh, okay. That's before my time. No, 1990 was before, before my time. Hey, ninety-five, ninety-four is when the development yeah. tax paid yeah. for. Is this any? Is this the kind of project the development tax <laughs> could pay a portion on? Uh, well, here's the thing. De to me, development tax it already goes into debt service to right. pay. You know, half of a the portion. development tax goes in. I guess I'm pays. referring to the other half. The other half. Okay. That just limits. The other part. What I like about that capital is that you are paying. For some capital needs as you go instead right. of so the other half has been used for other capital expenditures for example uh, sheriff's cars patrol cars and you know over the previous years we've had enough dollars there to take care of that in our technology and that amount of money has shrunk down to where we it doesn't accommodate it's beginning to increase again but we're a long ways from where we were Okay, so all of this to say, what you guys sort of need to give us a little bit of direction. What else do you think we need to do to continue this discussion, or do you want to continue this discussion? I don't think we have no choice but to continue the discussion. That uh, <clears throat> the good thing about foresight is that she pointed out a window of fourteen and. 15, where we may be able to squeeze another project in that's not a school. So what I'm looking at, if we don't take that window of opportunity on this judicial building, we may not be looking at the judicial building till 17, 18, uh, beyond that, because we gotta do the schools. But during that time frame, how secure am I going to be over there in that judicial building and all these other things you brought up about these buildings and the safety and all this during this period of time. So I'm wondering if we do, do not take this window, how is it going to affect me security-wise, safety-wise, so on and so forth with the shape of these other buildings, you know? so may be pushed to a point where we got to look at taking this window. Unless, like you say, we're going to spend a million dollars on the corn shop or the old bank building or wait until something hit us on the security end or, or what? The, the window that you're talking about, I'm afraid, from what I'm hearing, that that window may not be open as, as wide as it they look because I don't, I can't see the big picture from we can see the debt but as far as seeing the other funds right now I can't see those fun, uh, funds to know what the big picture is as oh, far as only thing I'm what it's going to cost us on the entirety yeah only thing I'm looking at this was just told us that we're paying down debt service with the amount of 25 million a year that's how much we're paying down Am I correct? Now, if I'm paying that much down, I should have some leadway when I go borrow this money where I don't affect the tax rate like I would the year before. That's that's my thinking. I, I could be wrong. But we're paying down that much debt a year, $25 million. I understand that, but, but, it, but this fund... To me, you, you got to look at this fund as, as, as just like you do all the other funds. I mean, they're the entire. Well, budget. I do. I, what I'm looking at is capital projects. I'm not looking at ongoing operations. Ongoing operations is where I look at maybe my tax rate is going to fluctuate because this is something I got to do year in, year out, and whatnot. But capital projects, that's something that I build and I know I got to pay for it but it's not an ongoing operation, so to speak, where it's going to fluctuate. That's the way I look at it. But I mean, I'm not saying I'm, that I'm against it or I'm saying I'm for it. I, I want to see the, the, the big picture of it before I can commit to Well, we're not doing a commitment. We're just proceeding on with the idea of trying to reach this window of opportunity 
of uh, fall 2014, 15. I think what I heard, and she can correct me if I'm wrong, is that we were looking at going to the bond market. We're going to go in the spring. The spring of 2014. Mm -hmm. So yes. should we drop this project and say, hey, we're not going to even try to even see about reaching the goal of going or, or yes. what? This, and Lisa can address this better than I can, but let's think here a moment. We don't have this capacity in the debt service reserve to move any pennies out of it or anything else in this upcoming budget year. <coughs> That's going to happen down the road. Mm -hmm. So if a tax increase is required, it's probable that you're going to have, for regular operating needs, you're probably going to have to step up this coming uh, fiscal year. So it, this is not going to give you the relief on what has to be done in this next budget year. So so this right here will not, is really not going to affect the yeah. county general? It, it, it can help us two, three, four years down the road. Right. It, it can really begin to help them. But right now, I don't see... You've got to be a problem. You can't move anything out of here now because we need the money. There's no excess capacity here yet. It's coming up in 2014 and 15. That's the window. On the $8 million, the, the garage, you got that under fall of 2013. Is that when we Well, when I say fall, I, I think spring. Fall means spring. Fall means, fall means spring. <laughs> Every time. Every time. Fall means spring. So I'm just going to scratch out fall. Just know. <laughs> just <laughs> spring of 14, which might be January. Right. That's not okay. spring, that's winter. Well. <laughs> so it would be. So we got a lot more time for discussion mm -hmm. before we get to have to make that commitment at that point. Right. But we just don't want to drop it and, and not bring it up right. anymore. Mm -hmm. I guess what we're looking at is uh, should we proceed on to monitor <coughs> our capital debt and whatever and, and the security or whatever and continue this process and see where we're at by the spring of 2014. Well, I'm, o I'm open to give, you know, m to get more information to find out if it's doable. Yeah, we're not, they're not asking us to make a decision tonight and go to the bond market tomorrow. Right. But we need to be looking at it, the expenditure of $60 million. You know, we need get all the time in the world to look at all kinds of Well, areas. I think that, you know, b budget needs to <coughs> look at this I'll just so they'll know, yeah. hey, as they're planning and making commitments that they know this is something I, I, I fully support this as far as the need to have this to just build it. and as you said it, even so it's not going to be until 2017 or so mm -hmm. before it's built and all this time these buildings are continuing to crumble the county's right. continuing to grow and um, so I think budget really needs to look at it the numbers so that they can do some planning and some thinking as they make other commitments. So maybe we should ask the mayor. I mean, under ideal circumstances, what would your timing be? Would you want us to approve this tonight and send it on to budget so that they have the ability to act on it in the upcoming <laughs> budget <laughs> cycle, or is that <laughs> not necessary? It's not necessary in the upcoming <laughs> budget cycle. Mm -hmm. It's not because necessary. I, you have to deal with next year's budget uh, uh, without uh, uh, using any dollars that may potentially be available. I believe in the debt service reserve fund. That they're not there until another year at least has passed. But after we get through with this budget, and but like Commissioner Gooch has said, you can see the potential for the future of this particular fund here. And if you have to go ahead and make the hard decisions now about next current year about property taxes, then if that's done, then this opportunity might still be available. I, I will say this, something you said a while ago, a concern I've got is tomorrow. On three dockets, there's th a thousand people on three dockets. Mm -hmm. Now, I can be loaded that building. It's not a thousand it's, it's not a thousand people. I saw your antenna go up. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. You might get a visit tomorrow from some folks. Come on over. Come on over. <laughs> tomorrow, <laughs> there may be a hundred standing outside the building at 8 o'clock. Right. And that's, to get in that's there. two dockets that start at 8 right. and one that starts at 9. And make sure. And are they all in there at one time? Well, I mean, throughout that. Oh, they got throughout, throughout the day. Well, 
They'll start. They'll all start at the same time. Eighty yeah, percent of them, or ninety, will be in there before eleven o'clock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Love New Year's. They have to be there for the hey, <laughs> Make sure you take him up on oh. the full floor. <laughs> yeah. And then he's, like, he's thinking about some other. We have the ability for some of those people to be uh, over in the coin building. Or and the way I'm seeing that, <laughs> that if we don't do something, then we can be shut down in a way. And if we're shut down, and those people's got appointments to be in court, or, oh. <laughs> you know, what's what's going to happen? We could be sued big time. Here's the reality: window or no window, tax increase or no tax increase. This is a necessity for the county that right. has to be built. But don't I'm convinced don't, don't we, don't, like it, yeah, we don't need to, <laughs> we, don't we don't have to like it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But we don't need to spend another dime right. until the full commission is all in on this. Right. We've done a study in 2002, 2008. Right. We've gone we to the Birch Building. That. We've done so much work that, I mean, everybody needs to realize this is a necessity. It has to be done. Right. It's a safety, a security, a confidentiality right. issue for all of our folks. I mean, you're walking people through for adoption hearings mm -hmm. in all of this mess. Mm -hmm. And it's not safe for eight-year-old kids mm -hmm. to go walk in there to receive their adoptive parents, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. um, we got to do something. So, so if we could get this group here just to do what he just said, endorse the need and the concept and uh, instruct all the other committees and all of us to, to keep moving toward a specific definition of timing and, and how much it's going to cost and when. I'll make that motion that we, that we continue the process and we look at it and gain more information to find out all the facts and where we can make a better decision. Now, would we interpret that motion as, as that we're, we're approving this and sending it on to budget, or, or it's? I'd like for you to make it a little stronger. Confirm the need for doing this. That's what this committee is supposed instructions to, yeah. to to see if we can provide enough information to all of committees that need it, budget in particular. And I think Mr. Gooch had a good point. If we can fully inform them, they'll know what all the options are in their toolbox yeah, as far right. as future this current year, next year, two or three down the road, so they can put all these pieces together within all the other funds. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you make it more. <laughs> you second it? Yeah. Any more discussion or you want to read back to you? <laughs> Okay. Oh. <laughs> Confirm the need for a new judicial building and continue the process, getting more information to make a better decision. Do you want something in this motion about the other committees, or is no, this what you're thinking? I don't, I don't, that'll automatically happen. I think Lisa and I will, at the appropriate time, we'll bring the budget committee up to speed right. on these capital needs right. and fold that into the budget discussion. Which is May 9th. May 9th. May the 9th. Okay, so we'll be doing your that's, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> so we're going to take what she's prepared here and she's going to do a little revisiting on that and revision and we'll take it on forward so they right. can see the, the capital need picture. You don't change uh, that to spring. Do you want that in this motion? <laughs> yeah. Forward instruct the uh, mayor and the forward the director to do just right. that. The concept. Forward the budget. Mm -hmm. So that's can, what, it, so if that's can, what we if that's what we need to do, that's, yeah, that's fine. So Follow the, uh, the five-year uh, capital projections mm -hmm. onto the budget, so they can yeah. see that. So they can include it in their plan. Yeah. Yeah, because this committee right here is, is supposed to identify the need, and that's what we're doing, you know, and sending it on with all the information that we can get to justify that need. So, any other discussion? <laughs> All in favor, let me know what's saying. Aye. Aye. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, what's that book? That old one. The, the one you were reading out of? Oh, that was the old one. This one is the magical mystical idea. Okay. Is it? I don't know. You don't have any more copies of that for. I got one. It's, uh, it's all the pieces, but this is. We could make a copy of. Somehow, just 
Or if you like for me to. I think the, maybe the committee members would like maybe it. Maybe we get it scanned in on the iPods out there. Yeah, that'd like yeah, be fine. Yeah. And I, this little handout I gave you, that's just the that's last the iteration. What, did I, what was that? That was uh, report number five. They had seven alternatives. That's the two alternatives that finalized, finally came out of all this discussion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, next on the agenda, Midland Fosterville Fire Station. I'm this, these are just reports, no actions necessary. Uh, we do have a temporary occupancy permit some several weeks ago. They're open in there, and we will have to come back. We're having to do a change order on sprinkling that building. We will get approval from you guys to spend that money when we find out how much it is. I will tell you that since we had our last discussion, we've resubmitted all the information to the insurance, property insurance people, and even though we have a $100,000 deductible, they've now raised their assessment of what the replacement cost should have been to almost 150000 so it looks like we're going to get almost $50,000 of money. So we'll have that money, which we're pretty sure hopefully will be more than enough to take care of the sprinkling. Mm -hmm. So when we find that, I think we've already actually got, got the money. It. We've got the money in hand, so mm -hmm. but we'll have to get you to approve. Was that not in the contract for the sprinklers? No, that was, that, that was not, it was not overlooked. The engineer thought that it wasn't code requirement but after further consideration by our, with our codes people it is a code requirement and the residential side of it uh, what the what it, it, it has to be a sprinkle building on the, res the sleeping quarters and then all that okay he on the road fire station well, i'm just going to tell you that, that again this is just an update they were given notice to proceed on that effective i think monday of this week so they're moving forward on doing that work. Um, we have revised those drawings and had all this discussion regarding the sleeping quarters and regarding the kitchen and the bathroom. And they've come to some excellent agreement between all the parties and they've got that drawn and we have a contingency of $20,000 and we think we're going to be able to do these changes in this addition, which will make the structure a whole lot more functional and livable for less than that amount of money. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, I don't have the change order requirement on that, but if it's under $20,000, we can execute the change order and make those changes to that structure and keep going. So that, that looks favorable and looks good. All right. Any other business come before the committee tonight? Entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved.